Hello, First Nations campers. We are out here at Darter Pond on Mequon Nature Preserve. Uh, this is a little guide about uh, collecting insects. That's probably my favorite thing of all the stuff I get to do at the preserve is catching bugs. And in your kit, everyone has gotten a little bug net that can also be used uh, in a pond. Uh, it's small when we bring it to you so it fits in a package, but you'll notice that it actually uh, gets way longer, so you'll have much better reach with it. When you're hunting for uh, insects, another great thing about them is that uh, there are bugs everywhere. There are more uh, insects, and they're known as arthropods, uh, invertebrates, than pretty much any other species or any other animal on the planet, so you always have a really, really good chance of finding them anywhere as you go. Um, when we go out here at Darter Pond, this is a really nice habitat, so there are tons of different bugs here. My personal favorite are dragonflies, so let's actually go around and walk around the pond real quick and see if we can't find any. Right now there's at least three or four different species here. I've seen 12 spotted skimmers, I've seen dot-tailed white faces, uh, common green darners. There are tons and tons of different dragonflies, and the longer you look at an area, uh, both on the ground, in, the, uh, in all the different plants, and in the air, you'll notice that there are bugs everywhere, especially on hot days. I think my favorite part about catching bugs uh, is on a Saturday, I do like to sleep in a little bit. Unlike birding, when you gotta get up really, really early, when you go out for bugs, they like it when the sun is high up in the air and it's really hot. And so you can go out at like lunchtime or after lunch and that is the best time to go looking for bugs. Uh, so let's uh, see if we can find one. Another thing, uh, bugs have really good eyesight, um, some more than less, uh, at least when it comes to movement. So they will see you coming, and so the best thing to do if you really want to try to sneak up on a bug is to go low to the ground and go from behind. Anywhere in front, side, or above, they're going to have a really easy time seeing you. So if you can get down low, if there's one on like a, on a, on a plant, if you go down low and you move nice and slowly from behind, they have a hard time judging because we are so big to them, it's almost like we're a tree. So if you move slowly, uh, they're not going to put together that something is coming at them. They're just going to think you're like maybe a tree blowing in the wind. But it's all about slow, steady movements low to the ground. And at which point you then, uh, with a flying bug, it's, its instinct is to fly up in the air. So you want to come down on top of it with the net because he's going to fly right up into the net. Hey, look at that, I just got one. <laughs> Looks like some type of beetle. And you'll see he's actually flying around in there. So all beetles have wings. Oh, look at that. He's trying to squeeze through. You'll see he's crawling in here. Oh, that's really cool. Another really important uh, piece of equipment you should have when you're out looking for bugs uh, after you catch one in the net is a jar. And so when you catch one in the net, you want to transfer them quickly into the jar and cut the lid. Uh, maybe have some air holes on the top. Right here, I actually have a dragonfly. I, I believe this is an eastern pond hawk, but I will have to take him back home and use my insect book to uh, better figure out what he is. But when I'm done, I will bring him back and let him go in the same place that I found him. Um, another thing, always be aware of what you're doing when you're catching a bug. Um, there are certain bugs out there that, you know, they, uh, they don't know any better, and if you catch them, they're gonna think you're trying to eat them, and they might actually be able to bite or sting. I think the best example would be a bee or a wasp. If you ever see a really colorful yellow and black lines, that might be a warning from the bug to say, hey, if you mess with me, I'm gonna sting. I'm gonna fight back. So just always be cautious. The best rule of thumb is if you don't know what you're catching um, and you are worried that it might be able to bite or sting, you can always just enjoy it from afar. Not every bug has to be captured with a net. Stuff like dragonflies and butterflies, they're really pretty you know, harmless. I mean, a bigger dragonfly might be able to nip you, but as long as you put it in, you know, from the net uh, straight into the jar, you shouldn't have any issues. It's more of the bees and the wasps that you just want to enjoy from far away. But these bigger, uh, colorful insects can be really fun to capture if you'd like to put them in your jar. But the biggest uh, important thing is to always let them go when you're done. Another thing, you know, once again, when you got them in the jar, we've got you this nice uh, little field glass that we can use so you can get a better view because. Uh, even though the insects are small, they are just as uh, detailed and complicated as bigger animals are, and you just have to look at them with some type of uh, magnifying glass to really see just how intricate and well designed these animals are. They have lots of really cool features on them, and they have you know a lot of different you know their eyes. They have compound eyes, so many many lenses versus us having one. They got six legs, some have eight legs, so and you know sometimes two to four wings. 
there's a lot to look at. So if you're just looking with your eye, you can see a lot, but when you, you get out that field glass, then you really get to see some of the cooler details about these animals.